Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. No, you're not. You're Preston. <laughs> Joseph Smith translated some golden plates, and those are known as the Book of Mormon. Did James Strang do something similar? It turns out he did. We're going to learn more about these plates called the Vori plates uh, with historian Bill Shepard. He's a member of the Strangite Church and we'll learn more about some of the miraculous things that James Strang did. Check out our conversation. Hey, I just wanted to mention one more thing. The Mormon News Report podcast is an awesome podcast and they cover the week in Mormon news with a healthy dose of snark and commentary. Join Brant and Jenny every Monday to get caught up on all those news stories that you can stay up to date on the latest Mormon news. So check out Mormon News Report. It's a great podcast. Brant and Jenny are great friends. Now back to our conversation. I think one of the things that attracted people was James Strang had a lot of really prophetic gifts. And I know, um, too, that he translated some plates and, and as well as the Book of the Law of the Lord. Okay. So can we, so, can we talk about those yes, two yes. versions? Yes, so, so right off the bat, uh, you know, James J. Strang is, is, uh, is going to claim, he is going to claim that an angel appeared to him and... Uh, said that there are seal plates on this prominent hill in Bory or in Burlington, the outskirts. So he is going to get his witnesses. Uh, and I, I don't think, I'm not sure how many were even Mormons, but these witnesses... Some uh, of them were non-Mormons. Right. And so they, they go and they dig the dig under an oak tree and they said that the, the branches were sealed around these blast, uh, brass plates and so forth. Uh, and they testified of this. And a man named C. Latham Scholes, who invented the typewriter, was in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and he came out as a news. The paper. Cordy typewriter that we still use today, yeah, right? Yeah, the old one. <laughs> but he, he came out and even he testified, he says, uh, this appears to not be a, a humbug, you know. So, but it, it, it again, primitive Mormonism, because James Strang is going to claim angelic ordination and being having uh, the Urim and Thummim. He is going to translate plates that people saw widely. So was that the Vori plates? Were those the first things he translated? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, but and the, these were important in that uh, uh, they it, it, it's very believable about an, an a, a race of people uh, that are uh, on their last legs and they're going to be uh, destroyed and they're going to hide their records you know, seal up the records until that they are translated in the future. So, so this was an important thing. Again, primitive Mormonism. And so what about the book of the law of the Lord? I know that was another uh, book of scripture that you guys use. When, when was that translated and how did that come about? Let me say first that uh, Things didn't go that well at Vori, particularly when you had this group of people around called the pseudos, and uh, that would write everybody about the, uh, anything that went wrong and, and so forth. They even had a couple uh, a newspaper, a couple of editions in a small town adjoining, but uh, James A. Strain seemingly realized that he needed to get away from the pseudos to so get the pseudo a, like just p-s-e-u-d-o that's, yes, that's uh -huh, what they called them pseudos okay. and uh needed to get away from 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 all this all these problems all these right in your midst you have uh, johnny page you know who is is a uh, who who is given up on Mormonism. Page is going to go all the way down except to eventually believe the Book of Mormon. So, uh, needed to get away. And uh, Strang became aware that uh, in the islands of the Great Lakes was the Beaver Island. 
and that this would uh, that he would be able to get to Beaver Island, obtain cheap or free land, and that people could uh, people could be free of the of the pages and okay. the, and the other people. So this was by eighteen. 50 that this is going to be in starting. Vori is going to be uh, downplayed after uh, after 50. The people are going to be moving up to be right After 1850. And, uh, and James uh, <coughs> James is going to say that an angel appeared to him and, and uh, told him of the uh, plates, uh, the sealed record, uh, and uh, these are the plates of Laban and yeah, the Book of Mormon. Yes, yeah. and uh, that they are uh, delivered to him. That he translates them, um, which which is is certainly a doctrine used by the the Strangites today, uh, as looked on as as one of the lost books of the Bibles, if you will. Uh, again, primitive. Mormonism. Um. Okay, so the first set of plates were the Vori plates. Yes. And they tell of a lost people, kind of like the Book of Mormon. And I, I know that in your book there was a there's kind of a little facsimile of what they looked like. It was all, it was also interesting to because we don't have. Well, there were lots of newspaper accounts of the day, and lots of non Mormons saw these plates, unlike the gold plates, which nobody saw. Yeah. Um, but those plates were stolen, is that right? Well, we, we, we don't know. Uh, they were packed away in uh, uh, one of James's plural wives. They were, were taken off the island, and, and we believe that uh, according to a Gabriel Strang, which would be a son of Strang, and, uh, that, uh, that they were lent to a couple Brighamite elders who borrowed them. And that was the last was ever seen of them. So uh, we, um, of course, we don't know where they went. We, but, right. but, you know, we could blame it on the Brighamites. <laughs> they were an easy target back yeah. then. <laughs> okay, so the Vori plates were lost. That was a while after 1850, though, wasn't it? Or, or yes, yeah, and, and and we don't even know when, when. You know, in the 60s or 70s. Okay. Uh, um, uh, uh, might mention something about the diaspora. Would that be okay? Okay. Well, before we do, can we talk about the this book of the law of the Lord? So these are the the plates of Laban, or that are talking yes. about the Book of Mormon. Yes. And, and and that is the central feature, the earlier feature of the Decalogue. Okay. Uh, but attached, and, and in 1851, a small version of the Decalogue is printed on Beaver Island. And there are a few... Uh, so were they found on Beaver Island, or where, where were these found? Well, they were taken with people, took them when they were kicked, you know, they were driven off of Beaver Island. Okay. And uh, a few are survived. There's a... Uh, one or two in private custody in Yale and in and, and, and different big the libraries. The printed book? Yes. yes. Okay. But were these golden plates as well? Or? No, no. Uh, the, uh, Strang would claim that he, uh, he he went out to, there was a, a kind of a ship that was uh, uh, stranded in the island, uh, derelict. So he went out there on the ship, did the translating away from people or whatever and he claimed when he was done and you know rather typical Mormonese he gave the uh, plates were returned to the angel who uh, took you know took the plates took the urim thumrum so they were given by an angel and taken back by right. the angel okay pretty much so, so there weren't any witnesses or no nothing not, uh, no like so it's a little different than the Vori plates a little respect. yes okay and so they contained the, the the Ten Commandments, and these are the same plates that uh, Nephi got with Laman and Lamuel. And yeah, uh, but that is only uh, a portion of it. With uh, attached to the uh, uh, the fifty one is just a very small. <coughs> excuse me. 
a uh, very small small work basically with just the laws you know the ten commandments and 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 but strang is going to add to those gonna gonna add his teachings about uh uh the about christ uh, and 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 i can go into some of his teachings later but uh it's going to be a rather thick book and but it's it was printed on Beaver Island. Okay. But the martyrdom or the attack on Strang is going to occur then, and it's going to be packed up in people's uh, chests and things and taken off the island. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with historian Bill Shepard. In our next conversation, we'll talk about more parallels with Joseph Smith, including James Strang's assassination. Strang is going to be at his home and they're going to say they want you on the dock and he's going to walk down to the dock and the, and Whitworth and Bedford are going to jump out behind him and shoot him down. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe to patreon.com slash gospel tangents and for just five dollars a month you can hear the entire interview without any interruption. If you'd like a paperback version of our transcripts, go to Amazon.com and do a search for Gospel Tangents Interview. Also, if you'd like to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website and I'll be able to send you a transcript as soon as they are completed and click the subscribe button. You can also find our latest information on Facebook.com slash Gospel Tangents, as well as we're on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. The link is at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents, and you can subscribe there. Also, please give us a five-star review. If you want to support all of the podcasts as part of the Dialogue Podcast Network, go to lyceum.fm, that's L-Y-C-E-U-M dot F-M, and do a search for Dialogue Podcast Network or Gospel Tangents, because, you know, that's a pretty cool one, too. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got some of our great videos. Thanks again.